Well, 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 there is a brand new Heroes and Villains cruise ship making its way to the high seas. We also have a cruise line promising, guaranteeing that you'll get to see the northern lights. And well, there's are, there are some things you shouldn't do with the stuff in your cruise cabin. Some things you shouldn't do on the cruise balcony. Some say genius, others say ban them. Uh, interesting conversation. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. Surprise for your face on a Thursday, Thursday, the 21st of March, 2024. I'm very excited to have you here for today's presentation. Cruise news story number one, a big announcement coming out from the Meyer Verft shipyard that the keel has been laid for the next Triton, the next Triton class cruise ship for Disney Cruise Line. Triton, that's a bold name. I really like that. The Triton class, it's the Disney wish, the Disney treasure. That is what the treasure and cruise news story Story number two, we now know the name of the third Triton, Triton class cruise ship, the Disney Destiny. And it certainly is a sweet serendipity that Star Wars is owned by Disney because one of the best Destiny quotes ever from the 1983 Return of the Jedi, Star Wars quote, Darth Vader to Luke Skywalker, you underestimate the power of the dark side. If you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. And I'm kind of digging the theme for the Disney destiny. It's going to be a heroes and villains uh, cruise ship. So you're going to have equal representation of the Gastons and the Beast and Scar and... Mufasa. I don't remember all these Disney peoples. Recently, I went to a Lego show and I picked up a Disney minifig of my favorite Disney hero, Robin Hood. And of course, his nemesis, Prince John. It's great. There's a great board game out there. I don't know how many people that are into board games, but there's a great board game called Villainous. And it's based on the villain's perspective. And it started with Disney villains, but it moved on to Star Wars and Marvel. Um, yeah, again, I don't know that this will motivate me to go on a Disney cruise ship because it's a lot of kids, no casino, and everything is kind of orientated as if you're a, a kid, which is great. I know a lot of people like that. Not my thing, but uh, exciting for this next, uh, you know, Triton class cruise ship. Of course, Disney bought a cruise ship that's going to sail in Asia, one of the world's largest cruise ships. They bought for like 44 million. I believe that's going to be called the Disney Adventure. That's going to come out first, but we have the Disney Treasure coming out at the end of the year 2024, and then the Disney Destiny will come out in 2025. How about all you adult fans of Disney? Look, I, I got nothing negative to say about adult fans of Disney because I'm an adult fan of Lego and we have our own name called AFOL, A-F-O-L. Can I show you one Lego? Let's close out this story. Uh, I'll show you two Lego from the convention this past weekend. Exciting new news for Disney. Check out these two Lego things. They're almost, how, how do you say it, lentacular? First, we have Mario and Luigi. As you walk by it, the pictures change. That was pretty cool. And then we have Spider-Man and Venom. Uh, also very cool. Cruise news story number thrice. We have a cruise line that's guaranteeing or promising that you will get to see the Northern Lights on your cruise or they're going to give you something in exchange for your disappointment. Now, this is exciting. A Norwegian cruise line, not Norwegian cruise line, not NCL, but a Norwegian cruise line, a cruise line from Norway, Hertegruten. They have these cruises that will take you to where the Northern Lights are. And if you book one of these cruises that are 11 days or longer, they guarantee that you will see the Northern Lights. Or if you don't see the Northern Lights, they're going to give you a second chance. They're going to give you a free cruise. Here's the deets directly from the Hertha Gruden website. Sail the Norwegian coast with us during the auroral season between September and March on a voyage of 11 days or more. That's September the 26th. 2023 through March the 31st, 2024, or September the 20th, 2024 through March the 31st, 2025. If the Northern Lights do not occur within the side of your ship during your voyage, we will give you a six day southbound or seven day northbound original Coastal Express classic voyage free of charge uh, with an asterisk. So terms and conditions apply. But I do get asked often, how do I get to see the Northern Lights for sure? 
Well, it sounds like Herzegruten's got a little bit of a thought process around it. So if you're going to go to Norway anyways and you want to cruise local, uh, maybe check them out. They've got a lot of interesting cruise ships over there. I like that guarantee. Before we get to the next cruise news story, let me see if I can solicit some advice from you. Are we are we tired of this? Man, I, I, I so much love change. Uh, but are we tired of just the plain Jane background? Uh, I'm finally at the place in my recovery where I can lift stuff again. So I'm thinking about rearranging. Plus, look at the sweet piece of uh, art I picked up on the pier in Clearwater from a local artist, Mark Eason. This is like, uh, it's all paper. What do you, what do you call paper? A collage. It's like collage. I don't know. Should I work that into the, doesn't really seem like it goes with cruising, but uh, wh what do you think? Uh, is it time to rearrange? Is it time to make a change? Uh, the, I'm open for your um, opinions. Cruise news story number four, just a quick update from yesterday and a couple of days worth of stories. Uh, we've got a count on how many cruises for Royal Caribbean will be skipping Labadee over the next month or so. This will impact cruises up until April the 28th, 14 Port stops at Labadee have been canceled in the wake of the violence in Haiti. And so if you're cruising on Royal Caribbean with that itinerary in place until April the 28th, 2024, you may want to check your email or check your itinerary. It's probably been changed with Labadee being dropped and either a sea date or another port being added. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bummer, but it's uh, good to stay in the know now. Let's talk about this new trend in cruising where people are doing new things with their mattresses and their balconies and uh, whether it's good or not. But before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. A big thank you in advance. Well, here's exhibit A. This picture has been making its rounds around the internet and commentators have been talking about it. Read a cool article by Matt over at Royal Caribbean blog. My friend Don weighed in on it. I've seen uh, travel scouts talk about it. Everybody's talking about mattress gate. So uh, why not? Uh, there is this passenger that was enjoying a lovely day, a lovely day, a lovely day. Finish the song. I cook, okay. I hate that song. Man, it's such an earworm. Cruise passengers on Royal Caribbean spending a lovely day at Coco Cay. They decided instead of going to get a cabana on the island, instead of going to the Thrill Water Park, instead of getting in that big lagoon type swimming pool that everybody pees in, they decided that they would take their mattresses, mattresses, what's the plural of mattresses? Their mattressi from their cabin and place them on the balcony and that they would relax outside and enjoy the sun, uh, the, the the shade, I guess, that the balcony provides, but the warm air of the Bahamian Coco Cay. And uh, the thing that offends me most is reading. I, I really am against a literate society, not a, a society that's illiterate, but a society that is literate, a literate society. Uh, I'm against that. I think reading's bad and that all books should be burned. Hopefully you know me well enough that that's not my stance, but what are they doing? They're reading when they could be cruising. You can read at home. We, you know how we feel about this. Anything that you could do at home, you should not do on a cruise because you're on vacation, for goodness sakes. That includes using the internet. What do you think? Is this a genius move, stroke of genius, or is it cabin and balcony abuse? My friend Don really went hard. Uh, make sure you check out the Just Don video. I'll link it in the bottom. Uh, Don went really hard saying, what's next? Are you going to take the refrigerator? Are you going to are you going to strap it on your back? And are you going to take it down to Coco Cay and find a plug and plug it in your refrigerator? I'm not saying that that's an extreme stance, Don, but he brings up an interesting point. How much liberty do you have with the supplies, uh, the amenities of your cabin? Are, are you free to do with them what you will? And how far does that extend? You know, you could argue that the balcony is an extension of the cabin and therefore anything that could be used in the cabin is usable on the balcony. I've taken the table from the balcony and I've used it inside the cabin. I feel like I've taken a comfortable chair from the cabin and used it outside on the balcony. I've never taken the bedding outside, but where, where's the line? 
Where's the line? And, you know, some people have gone pretty extreme on this. Some people say it's super genius. Do whatever you want. You paid your money. Other people have said, look, you're going to ruin the mattress. You're going to take it out there and it's going to get moist and it's going to it's gonna mess it up for everybody else. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on mattress spoiling. But what do you think? Is this a genius move? Uh, should we leave well enough alone? Let this couple enjoy their books? You think they're reading Dune 2? There's not even a Dune 2 book. I guess it was all in Dune 1. Dune Messiah? Is that what these freaks are reading? Are they reading Fifty Shades of Grey? Is this early 2000? I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Leave a comment below. And if your ears peaked up when I said you shouldn't do something on a cruise ship that you can do at home, I made a classic video about how people are cruising wrong and, uh, you know, doing stuff on the cruise ship that you could do at home is the theme of that video. Make sure you check that one out next. I can't believe that was five years ago. A little low key Tony there, but uh, fun information nonetheless. Thank you for checking out the show today. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. It's Tony for La Lido Loca. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise news. It's over.